Good morning, everyone. I, I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, it's a real challenge for me because I couldn't find somebody who can interpret for me. I will try to do my best. And uh, could you please pray for me? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful place. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done here uh, to the pastor, to the leaders. Uh, thank you, Lord, because you, all the glory is for you. Thank you for the privilege that you are giving me and Chris to be here in front of your people. I ask you for revelation. I ask you for wisdom in order to transmit what is in your heart for them. I ask you in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, my name is Abner Gomez from Guatemala City, and I have the privilege to meet you, Pastor. Uh, it's, not a new, it's not usual for me to uh, invite somebody to the pulpit when I don't know them, you know. But I, I knew by my spirit that God wants to do something in, in our church that day. And uh, we saw a lot of miracles. We, we saw impartation of his anointing to the people then. And uh, because that connection, I'm here. I'm here. When, when I uh, met you, Pastor, and his wife, we were very impressed. You know, they spent uh, the whole day with us on Sunday. They went to the church service, and they stay in the, in the afternoon for the church activation. And we had amazing time with you, Pastor. Thank you for being sensitive to, to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, what I want to do today is I want to share part of my heart to you. Maybe I'm not a good uh, preacher in English, but I will, I will try to share something to you. But I would like to invite you to open your Bible and the uh, book of Mark, Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, and we will read uh, two verses, uh, 17 and 18. My wife sent you regards today. She's preaching in my church now. Uh, we have uh, three beautiful sons, Abner Jr., Pablo, and Christopher. He's, he's, uh, he's the youngest. And God uh, gave me the privilege to be grandpa. And I have three grandsons and beautiful, beautiful little girl. She's, she's just one year. You know, after three boys and three grandsons, I was expecting a girl. And God bless blessing us with uh, Mariana. And uh, I want to share to you something uh, from the Lord's heart. And I, I hope you, you catch what is in, heart, in, in, in God's heart today. The Bible says, and these signs will uh, accompany those who believe. In the name of Jesus, will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. How many of you believe that? They hands on sick people, and they will get well. You know, sometimes we read the Bible, and we know that this, this is true because this is, this is the Word of God. But the problem is, the Bible is just the Bible. We have to take the Bible and bring it to the action. You know, what the, the Bible says, you know. And I, and I was fighting in my mind many, many years because I went to a religion church, and I never had a relationship with God. And I, I was listening to beautiful messages, but that church never showed me how that thing the Bible said can happen, you know. And my wife and I, we, we decided one day to say yes to God, you know. He was calling us. I was a uh, worship leader for 14 years in my church, and I was feeling nice there, you know, playing the keyboard and singing. And, but God was challenging me to do something more, you know, and I was very scared, you know, even when my pastor told me the first time, you will teach at the church, I said, no, pastor, I'm not a pastor, 
please don't do that, you know. And, and uh, you know, I refuse this to, to do. But what I want to encourage you is, it's, uh, my wife and I, we, we had hungry inside of us. And we was thinking, if this, be, uh, how can I explain? If it's real, what the Bible said, something has to happen, you know. And we start, to, we start to ask God and say, God, please show us something who can change our lives, you know, because many of, of, of us go to church and, and next Sunday come back again and, and, and next month, next year, and we never change inside, you know. And God wants to use our lives. He wants to do miracles in order to bring us close to him and bless the communities, bless the countries, you know. I, w- I was thinking this morning, uh, a lot of miracles happen in our church, and uh, some people in, in, in the town, they, they start to call Restoring the Family Minister the Church of Miracles, you know, but some churches start to call Restoring the Family Church uh, Witchcraft Church, you know, because, uh, you know, when, when people don't understand that, that God is real, that God is still doing miracles, they don't, they don't, they don't believe it, even Christians, you know. And I remember one day, uh, every, every Monday, we have uh, praying fast at the church. And I saw a young lady came to, to my office. Uh, when I saw her face in the, in the beginning, I perceived in my heart that something was wrong on her. Because of uh, no hair. She was, uh, you know, her face color, her eyes. I saw something, you know. And I, and, I, and I perceive something sad inside of her, sad, is the word? Yeah. And, uh, and I asked her, how we can help you? And she said, I came here because I heard, and, uh, you know, in another city where I live, that some a miracle has happened here. And I said, oh, where do you listen to that? She said, Chimaltenango is like, like uh, four miles from Paramos. And she said, I came here because I need a miracle. And I asked her, what do you want? And she said, um, I have cancer. I got married uh, six years ago, and I have cancer, and I'm dying. You know, and I was thinking, oh, my goodness. That's hard. That's difficult, you know, to pray for somebody. It's more easy to pray for headaches and, you know, but cancer. You know, but, but that's what the Bible says. My Bible says, you know. They hands on sick people, and they will get well, you know. And that's what you, God says to we have to do. And I pray for her, but I, I tried to provoke her something before she left. I went to my office and I print a, a picture of her because she she asked me. She she not only wants to be healed of of uh, cancer. She said, I want a baby. And I said, she want a baby. You know, and she's dying, you know. And I said, nothing is possible for, for the Lord. You know, and I went to my, uh, I uh, print a, a lady pregnant, you know, in, in, in a picture. And I write uh, uh, that word, nothing is impossible, impossible for God. You know, and she went happy. Oh, man. And uh, I was expecting what's going to happen, you know. And I never see her again, you know, until six months. Six months after, she came back to the church with her husband. She was pregnant, four months pregnant. The cancer just disappeared, you know. And she was crying. She was crying. And now, Christopher now, he, he's a... Uh, He's a worship leader in church, Carmen, and her two little girls are singing in the worship team, you know? And you know why? Because the God, the, the word of God is true, you know? And many people are waiting for God to move into their lives. Many people want to, to see miracles. They want to see revivals in their life. But the truth is that God is waiting for them to take a step of faith. To bring his word in action. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are expecting for God to do something. And God is expecting for you. You have to do it. You know because he gave us the word. 
The only what we have to do is take the word and put in action. You know, and, and, and that's my message for you today. You know, because uh, Pastor Rodman is, is, is not Superman. I'm, I'm a weak man, you know. And sometimes I, like today, do you, many, of, many of you maybe don't know that this is my first time to preach in English. Yeah. I was very scared when Pastor told me, I don't have nobody can translate for you. And I said, okay, I would try. And I'm trying now, you know. And uh, I want to let you know today that God is, is so ready to move. You know, but our part is to provoke something. You know, I hear a lot of people say, I left that church because nothing happened there. You know, because a lot of people are looking for experience. They want to see many things. You know, a lot of people follow powerful pastors or evangelists around the world. You know, and they say, I, I left the church because I never felt something there. You know, and what I'm encouraging them is you have to provoke something. If you don't like your church, you have to provoke something there. You know, you have to bring all the word of God to the reality. We have to provoke things, you know. You know, that lady, Carmen, she, she came and she said, if miracles happen here, I need one. You know, and, and my job, you know, you know, sometimes we are very scared because we said, if nothing happened, if nothing happened, you know, it's, that's not, it's not your fault if nothing happened. You just have to lay hands on the people and let God do his job. Our job is not healing the people. It's just do what the Lord says, you know, you know. Amen. This morning I was telling the people, uh, when I'm nervous to do something or say something to the people, uh, God always reminds me, you are the host and I'm the water. All the time, you know. I can be a beautiful host, but it's no water. You know, God is water. We are just only instruments. And God wants to remind you today, you know, don't be scared. If God say, lay the hands of, over somebody, just do it. It's, it's not your, your, um, I can't explain, responsibly to see people be healed. But your responsibility is do what the Lord sent you to, to, to do, you know? God is, God is ready to move in churches. But the churches, they don't want to provoke him, you know? They don't want to do nothing. If you don't do nothing, nothing is going to happen. You know, many people ask me, oh, pastor, are you rich? And, and I, I told them, yes, and Jesus, I'm rich. They say, because you travel too much. And I say, I travel not because I'm rich. I travel because I'm not. You know, and God always provides for my needs. You know, and he wants to do too. You know, many people are waiting here to go to Guatemala, Africa, and they say, oh, maybe one day, one day. One day, the, the Lord tell you today, take your credit card, buy your ticket, go, and he will supply to pay back when you come back. Because you will see God's miracles, you know. We have to provoke things happen in our lives. A lot of people outside need a help. But we say, ah, maybe we are not ready to help them. You know, don't be afraid. Just try to provoke God's Amen. During the, my last 20 years in minister, God showed me many things, but I want to uh, try to teach you four uh, principles, four ways to bring a movement of the Holy Spirit in your life and your marriage and, and your church. The first that I want to teach you is about to, God wants to rebuild knowledge to you. You know, we have to, to, to start to think different, you know. You know, we have to, to start to let God put uh, her, his thought in our mind. That's right. You know, that, that's, we, we have to, to, to think different, you know. A lot of people outside want to see something. You know, many people... In, in your neighborhood, maybe they don't know that you're a Christian because you are the same as them. Maybe you think the same as them. Maybe you 
uh, you react same of them. But I know this is the time to show them that we are different. We are different. We are different, you know. We, can, we, we are different because God is in our hearts and God is in our minds. We came to the earth to resolve problems. I want to put some idea in your mind. One day you have to die. And you know that. And prob probably somebody will go in front and, and they have to say something. What would you like to people or your family say for you that day? What would you like to hear that day? Your body is there. Somebody has to go in front. What I encourage you is from today, you have to think about it. You know? You have to think about it. what the people will say. You know, we came to the, to the earth to resolve problems. You understand what I said? You came to the earth to resolve problems. Your problems and people problems. You know, because we as a church are the hope for the whole earth. We are the hope for them. You know, and when I, when I died, I want to my kids remind me as a father who resolved problems. You know, not provoke problems. You know, but we need, we need to understand that God wants to reveal his knowledge to his people, you know? When, when, when there is no revelation, people often repeat the same things. You know, they go to church, they come back, they go to church, they come back, and nothing happens. You know, because you don't have revelation. You know, you have to ask God when you read your Bible, God, reveal me something for today. For today. Reveal me something for my son, for my husband, for my boss. You have to ask God. Amen? God is attracted to the movement, not to paralysis. Paralysis? Yeah. Where there is no revelation, the movement will be died. And it, it will become an institution instead. But you know why? Emily hates God, God's people. He hates you. He will hate you. Because he knows that you can do all the things that God said in the Bible. You know? He will try to distract us many, many, many times. You know? Many times. Four weeks ago, Pablo went to his job. He went to, he works for Comcast. And he, he sold, uh, you know, in and out to the people here in this country from Guatemala in, by um, call center. Uh, and he had a break with his friends and he went out for, for lunch. You know, and he was sitting in the table with, with some uh, uh, friends of him in, in, in the company, they ordered hot dogs and they were sharing, you know, four people sitting in the same table, you know. But in the same time, a, a black car with four guys came out and they took their guns. <laughs> in the table where my son was sitting. Two of his friends died. You know? He's still alive. Next day he came to, to the church and he said, Church, thank you for praying for me. You know, but every day we as a parent we have to protect our kids. You know? We we have to surround them with the holy presence. You know? And he was very scary and said, Daddy, Daddy, I saw them dying in front of me. And his friend and, and him who was sitting in this side, nothing happened to them. You know, miracles happen every day. And I told him, uh, Pablo, that's happened because God loves you. You know? 
And uh, he was very scary. And, and I asked him, what do you will do now? You want to go back to work? And he said, I'm, I'm very afraid about it because the, the guys, they recognize me. I saw their face and maybe they will come back for me. And I said, and I told him, you need to stop. If God protect you yesterday, he will protect you next day because he is with you. And you have to still work in because the Bible says that you have to supply your family needs. And he went there and, and he was playing. You know, that day when, when I saw him play the drums in the worship, I never saw something like that, you know, because he has his own experience with God, you know. And, 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 and the, when the police came, they, they collect more than 100 balls. And my son was there. And I told him, I told him, I love you, but God loves you better than me. And this situation is teach you to be faithful to the Lord. Please, be holy for God. That's what my encourage to him, you know. But God knows that evil hate people. Evil hate people of God because God has a purpose for all of us in the earth. Amen? The second thing that I want to share you about revelation is revelation brings us progress all the time. You know, a lot of people want to be prospered, but they don't know how or when. We need the revelation of God. I know you are living in a beautiful country. You know? But many people here, even living here, they don't have the revelation how they can live here. Amen? I want a grateful uh, Pat, and I'm grateful with Pat and, and Fanny. I'm so happy to be with them and I was learning talking with them you know and I'm so grateful for your hospitality and I'm learning too much through you good testimony amen and um, I was thinking yesterday I saw a lot of Guatemalans around the area walking uh, cleaning gardens and you know and I'm happy for them and I, I try to challenge them all the time do the best did the best. Guatemala, we're good workers, you know. But you know what happened? Many people, I, I met people, I saw people in Spain, Ireland, uh, Welsh, Scotland. God, God gave me opportunity to travel many, many places around the world with interpreters. But not what I saw. I saw people from Guatemala, from different countries, living in the same condition than Guatemala. You know why? Because they they change the nation, but they never change their mind. They thought. And that's happened in the church too. Many people come to the church and, and they know God is good. God can do miracles, but they never see something in their life. You know? Revelation brings us progress. You know, and God wants this for you. Amen? God wants to bring unity to your church. God is pleased when he sees unity in the church, you know. This job is not for your pastor and, and his wife. It's for all of you. You have to find your place in this church. And you have to, to catch the God's vision, the God's... Uh, what is the word? Hmm. I'm sorry. I tried to, to bring... Uh, no, it's not a vision. It's some more. Como se dice adentro? DNN at the house. You have to catch this. You know, you have to bring unity. God loves to see unity. The Spirit of God doesn't not say where there is a conflict. All the churches have conflict. All the time. You know, many people, I, I tell you people at the first service, some people come to the church that they, they don't want to talk with me. Because they say, they believe, I came to the church because God is here. But they don't want to say hello to the pastor. I feed in them, but they don't want to say hello to the pastor. Because they don't like unity. They say, I'm here because I just came to seek God. 
You cannot seek God if you don't respect your pastor, if you don't respect your leadership, you know. But a lot of people are re religious people. We, we cannot change the, their mind, you know. But Holy Spirit wants to see unity. They want to see walk together, you know, be one, you know. That's what the Holy Spirit encourages you to do, you know. Division is clear evidence of, of spiritual immature. Where there's division, there's no glory. That's why God uh, wants to be you glory when you be one. But division never brings glory. You know, because you together, you can do amazing things for the Lord. Amen. And I think this is the time for the church, the believers, to set aside their agenda and surrender to the Holy Spirit. You know, that's what you have to do. It's time for the church to align itself with God's agenda. Amen. I want to let Chris, Chris let, uh, read some verse of the Bible for me. Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 1 to 4. So it says like this, When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came, came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You know what the unity brings? Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God for that. I was sharing at the first service something happened in, in our ministry when we started. My wife and I, we, we were... This is my three points. Holy Spirit brings us hunger. You know, hunger. My wife and I, we, uh, we came from, from a, a church in Guatemala City, and we were passing through very, very hard situations, you know, because uh, we went to Bible school for seven years, and God called us to do His will, but our pastors and, that, and, and our home church, they, they, don't, they couldn't understand our call. You know, because I was uh, leading the worship, uh, the church growing from uh, eight people to 600. But God was calling us to go to be missionaries in our own country. But uh, I had a problem that day because I was in business and I lose everything. Because, uh, you know, sometimes when we, we are young, we don't listen to uh, counselor, you know, and, and I want to be prosper, but I never knew how. I never had a daddy correct to me or show me something because my daddy left the home when, lived the home when I was uh, nine years. You know, I grew up by, you know, alone and no father. And I was, I was uh, reminded when God calling us to go, we went to the pastor and we brought in a beautiful program that we want to do in order to start another church or do something. And he just smiled. And he told me, Abner, you're not ready to do that. You tell me all the time that you are not a pastor. You are a worship leader. And the second reason you cannot be a pastor is because you are in debt. And I decided to submit his authority two more years trying to pay my debts and never happened, you know. But one day, one of our, our leaders in cell groups, she, she said, you have to obey God. Because God showed me that you will bless when you decide to go and do what the Lord sent us to do. And my wife and I, we went without support, with nothing, you know. And, uh, the, and I went to a missionary uh, who was living and uh, in Guatemala City, he was looking for a couple to attend people from uh, feeding programs. And he was looking for the pastor to minister the kids, the families. And I went to him and, and he asked me, 
Uh, are you ready to live in faith? <laughs> you know, and I say, oh, of course, you know. I'm ready, you know, because I want to obey God. And he said, okay, I will give you two rooms for you to live with your children, and I will pay you $50 a month. And I give you two hour, uh, one hour in order to respond me back because I know that two more couples want to go to the same place. And I saw my wife, and I said, I'm in trouble. You know, I have to pay thousands to the banks. And what's this going to happen? You know, but something in my heart, I feel something to say, say yes, say yes, say yes. And I did. I went to live by faith, you know. And uh, we started, uh, we started in, the, in, in the two little rooms. We started to invite people to come for coffee, and no, nothing happened. We invite them for, for coffee. You want to come for a cup of coffee to, to our house? And, and nobody wants to go because they, they were very shy people, you know. I remember the first day that we want to do something. I, I say I will open my house again. I will start something, you know. And do you know what happened? Rain. Start to rain and rain and rain. And the, and the electric system just off. And I asked him, God, said, God, send me here. You have to do something, you know. And I decided to go and buy bread and candles. And I went to the houses. You know, five kids came to my room. Five kids. I start with five kids. One week after I invite, I tell the people, uh, the, 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 the kids, please bring me to your house. And no, nobody wants to take me to the house. Just one. And he took me who, to his house. And when I went to the, the house, I was thinking, is this a house? They were living in a cornstalk room. You know, the, uh, the, the beds, two beds uh, in the bricks. You know, and, and we saw the, the lot of rain inside of the rooms. You know, they were living in a very hard situation. You know. And I invite Maria to come. Maria was one of the, the uh, mother of, of uh, one of the kids that used to go to, to my meetings, you know. And she started to come, and after she bring, she bring down uh, Natalia, her sister, and, and she invited another people. And I think uh, five kids and three adults start to come to to. to to the little rooms, you know, and uh, but every week when I saw Maria's face, I saw bruises in her face, and I asked her, Maria, what happened? And she said, ah, I felt, next week I asked her again, Maria, what, what's going on? And she said, I felt again, and I said, oh, are you stupid or something? You know, I was thinking, I never tell her that, you know, I, I was thinking. But I decided to ask Natalia, and they say, Natalia, you have to tell me what's going on with her. And she said, it's because uh, she, she, she's married with an alcohol, alcoholic guy, and he abused of her all the time. Do you know? And I feel something to provoke something in my heart. And I say, I have to defend her. But how? You know? And we decided to pray and fast for two weeks. You know, and sometimes we pray and fast like we don't know how God wants to do. He was very sick with uh, ammonia. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, she decided to take him to the hospital, but he refuses to do. He said, call the pastor. And she was very excited because, you know, he, he hated hate me because uh, she was going to the church and he was Catholic, you know, Catholic. And... Uh, and she went to, to, to visit me three times, but I wasn't there. We went to Guatemala City that day with my wife for different reasons. When, I, when we came back uh, late night, we saw Maria with a plastic bag covering her head. And it was raining. And we saw her wet, you know, and she was crying. I said, my, my, my husband is very sick. You have to come and pray for him. And, we, and I went to, to one of the guys... Uh, who was uh, learning from me. I was discipleship him. His name is Waldemar. I took him with me and I said, please go, come with me. Let's pray for this guy. And we were very excited because we were praying for him two weeks. You know what happened? When we get into the room, we, we hear the people screaming, crying, crying because he died. He passes away, you know. And he was in, in the bed covering with the blanker and and, and she 
who has seen it, like, like, no, I went to see you, pray for him. She was mad. I saw her face, and she was screaming, crying, you know. And in that time, I was passing very through difficult economic situation. I was thinking, how can I help him? You know, I don't know how much is for the, help me again, the casket. And I was thinking, what can I do? I have to call somebody else to help me to buy that thing, you know, to put his body there. But I listened to the voice of God. And he said, I want to do something today. But I was confusing, you know, because when you are young pastor, you confuse your flesh and, and the guy's voice. And I was confusing. And I was thinking, what can I do? You know, some people crying about and seeing a, a very hard situation they were living, you know, the body there. And I decided to do something after fighting my mind, you know, a lot of, I was thinking many things in my mind that day. And I decided to, to tell them, could you please go out for a little while? And they, they, they were obedient. They went and I said to his wife, stay. She stayed there. And I decided, uh, you know, take the, the blanket and pray for him. Lord, I give you this man. And, and I start to pray, run, pray, run. Because I, I never knew what the Lord wants to, to say, you know. And, and I was speaking very slow. Don't give it a, the people a chance to, to talk that I'm crazy. Pray for dead people, you know. But in, in that time, I feel something like, like a bucket of ice and water came to my head, to my feet. And God gave me the, the words to say, Francisco, in Jesus' name, rise of the dead. You know what happened? He rose them. He took, he took my legs. He took, yeah, it's for God. He took my legs and he started to scream and said, Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. Jesus, so, so. Amen. And, 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 I, and I say, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk like five minutes. You know, you know, I'm being honest with you. I was scary. You know, all the people went out screaming. Oh, you know, and uh, that's, what, that's what God used to start the church. After that miracle, 45 people from his family surrendered to the Lord. Amen. You know, to God be the glory. Yeah, I, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm sharing you this is me, is me because I, I don't get here to, to impress you about, oh, look at the pastor from Guatemala, you know. Please don't remember this. I'm the the hog, and he, he's, the, he's the water. And if he God do it through me, he can do it through you. That's my message for you today, you know. It, it, it's, it's, it's powerful what the Lord is, is doing, you know. But uh, God is looking for people who provokes the things happen, you know. Many, peop many of you are expecting something for the Lord and do anything. You know, I was shamed. I was very scary. But I decided to say what the Lord said. You know, and, and you have to provoke God, you know. Because if God says something, you, you have to do. You know. Our hunger for God provokes a movement, movement of His presence. You know, His presence came to the house. You know, from that day... Their life changed, changed for completely, you know. Many people from Guatemala City knew that kind of miracle. And they want to contribute. No, they want to come and see the real. But I, I took advantage of them. And I told them, you come here, you have to help me with cement, bricks, uh, metals or something. Because we decided to build a house for him. You know? But if you want to know, 
if, if, if this is true, I encourage you to come in August with Tim, and I will show you where he lives now. God bless them with the house with second floor. You know, and, and I, want to, I want to explain you something. God gave me the privilege to build with, with some missionary friends. I was telling uh, Pat yesterday. God blessed me with, with a beautiful couple of missionaries. He was supporting me to build houses for, for the very poor families. And we put more than 60 floors in houses. And, and all the money came for them. And I was still paying my rent. One of the pastors came by day to me and said, Pastor, you are stupid. You are building houses for the people that you don't have your own. And I say, I don't know why, but God, you know, I can pay my rent. They, they don't have even for rent, you know. But I, I want to encourage you, provoke. You have to provoke God for all the things that the Bible says, you know. And my fourth point is, is the last. Sacrifice, you know. Praying and fast are spiritual sacrifice to God. You know, I don't know what sacrifice means for many of you here because you have everything. But we went there. We went to the city with, with our resources. Even today, we walk. We harvest tomatoes. We harvest roses. We do many things in order to, to keep our, our family up, you know. We are living in, 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 in a community where many people, they don't have resources. And we are giving them all the time, you know. I'm not a pastor because they pay me a salary. No, I walk, you know. But God sh showed me the way to, to bless my family. But sometimes we pass through very difficult situations, you know. When I start to build with the missionary in the two little rooms, I was feeding my family during almost two years with the leftover food. With the, with the people left when, when because I was administrator at a camping re uh, retreat camping center. And all the time when the churches went, they have a half of, of rice and beans, eggs, half of box of milk, things like that, you know. But my wife and I, we never complain to God. We say, if God is teaching us to have this, you know, we will be fine. And we teach our, our kids to be humble, you know. But sometimes in the ministry, we have to sacrifice something, you know. But if you do, God will honor you. God will bless you. You know, sometimes we just think in ourselves, you know. I want to encourage you to listen to your praise. God, give me this. Bless my, my father. Bless my job. Give me help. Give me this. Give me that. You know, but we, we are selfish sometimes. We need to sacrifice what God given us, given us in order to bless people. You know, a lot of people here are waiting for you. Thank you for, for bless our country. A lot of Guatemalans are here, you know. It, it's hard. Many people came here. Christopher asked me yesterday, Daddy, what is that thing the lady has in her, you know, something, you know, because immigration put something on her and they can't control where she is. It, it's, it, it's hard. And she's from Guatemala. And I was thinking, we are no animals. We are no animals. But it's the law. They came illegal here. They have to pay the price. The price. One day they will know. You know, but please, please do something for the people. Please ask God how you can be part of the people's life. Prayer and fasting are a spirit to sacrifice to God. That's good. But you have to do more than pray and fast. This generation wants success, anointing, and wealth without sacrifice. Every power man of God has a sacrifice style. Lifestyle. Because sacrifice is lifestyle. Sometimes you did something in the, in the past. Ah, I did something, you know, but what's that? Forget it about. That's past. Sacrifice is lifestyle. Every day, every week, every month, every year. You know? When we offer something to God that pleased Him, He decided to move supernatural in our lives. All of, all of us wants to see God 
do something to our lives. But it's a price to, to, to pay. Are you ready to pay the price? If we want revival, if we want to see something in God, we, we have to sacrifice things that are stopping us to do to God's will. What is the law of sacrifice? For something to be a sacrifice, it was a have a value, a cost. Sacrifice is, is a way to get closer to God deeply. Sacrifice is not an event, it's lifestyle. That's, that's what wants to remind you. Sacrifice involves prayers, praise, worship, offering, service. And time to spend seeking God. But it's more than that. What I want to do now, I want to ask you to make decision. You know, you came this morning and you get into the door and maybe you say, oh, Guatemala, Pastor Tom. But if God speaks to you, I want to ask you to make a decision. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is here in this place. Could you please give me permission to please pray something? Could you please stand up? I just want to pray for you now and finish now. And I want to, I want to put this word in your heart. I think today is a day of decision. If you want to be normal Christian, or you want to see something different in your life, and you minister, and you marriage. I know it's a, it's, it's, it's a person here, God showed me a person here who was fighting during the last years. You know, he was fighting, fighting, and nothing happened. And the Lord says, It's not the end. It's just a process. But the process is not the goal. It's just that the way. It's not the goal. The process never is, is, is the goal. It's just the way to go to the, to, you, to the world. And God said to the people, please take my hand. And, and I, and I want to take care of you as a father, take a girl, to cross the street. You are not alone anymore. You was fighting and you feel alone. But today I tell you, I'm your father. And I'm here because you. I came to give you a second chance. Don't fight alone. I'm here to bless you, to support you, and give you a second chance. 